Welcome to part three of the Dynaco ST70 build. Today, we're gonna do the wiring. And no, there's no wine, it's too early. Let's go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the circuit board and we're gonna change out these black beauty caps. I got some Mallory 150 series for the .1s and some nice Jupiters for the .05s. So these caps will pop right off the circuit board and then take a little bit of solder wick and just open the holes back up pretty easy to work on these boards so I do one half the board at a time you could do all of them if you want I just kind of do that to make sure that I'm not missing anything Board solder's nice. I'm using Kester 6337 rosin core. Alright, just for reference, the old caps are rated at 400 volts. The new ones are all 600 and 630 volt. Alright, changed out the black beauties. Time to reinstall the board and start wiring the amp. Here we go. Wiring procedure for the ST70. I'm going to do things a little bit different because I want to verify that the power transformer is okay and that the negative bias is in the right range. So I landed a terminal board here which I have the 1N 4007 diode instead of the selenium rectifier. So the plan is hook up all the wiring from the power transformer, output transformers to their respective locations Add the biasing resistors that I believe are proper, verify the bias is good, and check all the voltages from the power transformer, and we're gonna wire it per this nice pictorial diagram. All right, wiring is complete. I got the negative bias caps and resistors installed, and of course we have the two 10K bias pots that haven't moved in 50 years. So I'm gonna take a little blast of deoxid fader F5 screwdriver and work that pot just so it doesn't cut out on me while I'm testing so in case you guys didn't know for pots you want to use the fader F5 not the deoxid D5 that is for things like switches this is for pots for the initial power test, I'm going to be using a Variac. I want to bring this thing up nice and slow, watch the current in case something's wrong. Then I'll be checking the outputs of the power transformer and make sure the negative bias system is in specs. All right, here's power up using a Variac. First thing I'm going to check is negative bias. I'm looking to see maybe negative 30 to negative 40 volts. It's going to change when output tubes are installed. I've got the bias pots at their midway position. I'm watching the variac, see if there's any current to draw, which hopefully there shouldn't be. So there is approximately 120 volts applied. You see we got 38 volts. I'm taking my screwdriver, we're gonna adjust that bias pot. And you can see our little voltage swing there. Looks pretty good. 30 to about 47 volts. Let's check the other one. Same thing. So the center tab of these pots will be going to the grids of the output tubes and that's how you set your idle current. So that's good. Now let's check the other voltages off the transformer. All right, now we are looking at volts AC. I'm going to bring up the Variac. Now we're looking at one of the high voltage leads to ground. So right there, 
is about 80 volts applied. Let's see, we got 275 volts. Let's check the other one. Same deal. Go up to about 80 volts. Yep. So the high voltage windings are working. Let's check the filaments. All right, this is one of the 6.3 AC filaments. And there is about 120 volts. Let's check the other side because this transformer supplies 6.3 volts AC to each side. So there's separate windings for the left and right channels. There, here is the other set of 6 volt windings. There's about 120 volts. Good deal. The only one left now is the 5 volt winding for the rectifier tube. Here is the 5 volt winding. Bring her on up. There's about 120 volts. Looks great. No funny buzzing and no smoke. All right, our initial power up and transformer health has been verified. Next, I'm gonna wire up that circuit board. I've wrapped up all the tube socket wiring. I'm adding pigtails to each of these sockets that will go to the circuit board per this diagram. Actually, you could build this whole amp by these pictorials. They are that detailed. So I'll get all the pigtails landed ready to go into their locations on the board and we'll cut back. I believe I've connected all the pigtails to the tube sockets and other items that need to land on the circuit board. Over here you see some 10 ohm resistors with leads exposed. I'm going to be putting heat shrink over those. It's time to get this thing wired. So I'm going to make the process easier. I am going to start at the front of the board Get these leads installed and work my way back so things don't interfere with each other. So one thing that I really like about these Dynaco boards is they have these little eyelets that are on the circuit board traces for the leads to go in. Okay, circuit board wiring appears to be complete. There's a wire in every eyelet and it matches the pictorial diagram. So the next step would be to carefully inspect and make sure I didn't miss anything. And then in the next video, we're going to be applying power and testing it.